Well, whatever device you're listening on, take a look, take a second and just look at the screen or look at a TV near you or look at your computer. What you're looking at most likely is called an OLED display, organic LED. And that's going to take us to our third article. We're talking about a way to increase the efficiency of these OLED screens, okay. um, which will improve the battery life and the overall function of your devices. So this is coming out of University of Michigan, Professor Jay Guo. Basically, um, all these devices that we have that use OLED screens or OLED screens, they're actually not that efficient. They're much more efficient than the previous LCDs that we were using, but still over 80% of the light produced by this screen gets trapped somewhere in the process and it reflects around and instead of coming out, out of the screen perpendicularly to your eyes where you can see, it ends up reflecting sideways inside the screen and it never makes it out and it ends up dissipating into other materials. What? So, What's causing the trapping? Well, if... And this is kind of going to take us into a dive of how an OLED works. Okay. So an OLED has a cathode at the bottom, and it's got a bunch of organic materials underneath and basically a transparent anode on top of those and then glass. And what this stack adds up to is basically um, we've got a, a layer of organic molecules that emit light when they get excited by electricity. Okay. So different types of materials emit different colors of light when they're excited by electricity. So that's how we can get these different colored pixels for our screen. And what it does is these OLED screens pass electricity through these organic molecules and let them light up. And then the electricity gets passed back to the cathode and it does the whole thing over again. But the issue there is all this stack of materials, except for the very bottom where you're emitting light, they all have to be transparent and they also have to be conductive so that the electrons can pass back through, but the light can make it all the way out through the screen into your eyes. So these OLED screens, they have somewhere between five and some of them have like up towards 10 layers, different layers of different materials. And if these materials have different refractive indices, which basically means how much they bend the light when the light passes through it, a lot of it gets lost. So oh. this team from the University I of see. Michigan took and basically inspected every single one of these layers and see if they can do anything to uh, reduce the amount of light that's getting bent to the sides and getting lost in the sides and replacing it with similar materials that are transparent and also conductive but can allow the light to pass through perpendicularly and not get lost somewhere inside the screen instead of passing out to your eyes. So they had two main ways of doing that. The first of which is there's this material called indium tin oxide, ITO, and it's used a lot in solar panels and it's used a lot in these OLED screens. And what they managed to do was replace this ITO, which uh, refracts about 40% of the light. So 40% of the light was getting bent out of shape and not passing through to your eye okay. at this one layer. Um, they were able to replace that with a th very, very, very thin layer of silver, so thin that it's transparent, five nanometers thick. Um, you know, that's like one two hundred thousandth of a sheet of paper. Um, and so very, very thin sheet of silver that's thin enough that light still passes through it, but it's also still conductive. They were able to swap out that ITO, which led to a 40% increase in light liberation is what they call it. So the light's being emitted, they're liber liberating it, letting it come out free so it passes out to your eyes. Wait, that was one way. Hold up. Uh, I want to clarify something. ITO is transparent. This yes. Then silver is transparent. Also transparent. What? What did the replacement bring here? What What is the secret sauce that came with the silver? Okay, so basically, the silver doesn't bend light as much as ITO does. Oh. So the light is passing through it perpendicularly, mm, and it bends okay. a lot less of the light than the ITO does. So less of the light ends up bouncing around sideways, and more of it passes out perpendicularly to your eye. So you're basically optimizing the channel where the light is flowing and minimizing and how much is getting bounced back. I yeah, see. you that want this sense. light to pass out through the screen into your eye and none of it get bouncing around, you know, inside the screen instead of being displayed to you. That and makes sense. another way that a lot of the light was getting trapped is there was an air gap uh, between all these electronics and the glass in your screen. And what they did is they added a liquid that has the exact same index of refraction, which basically means if you were to dip glass in this liquid, it would be completely transparent. You wouldn't be able to detect oh. that it's there at all. 
So they were able to close the gap between these electronics and the glass at the top to make sure that less of the light bent. All this to say, you know, it's a lot of technic a lot of technical stuff, but what they did is they there's a stack of, you know, seven to ten different layers. They inspected every single layer to make sure that they could improve the amount of light that's being passed out through them. And what it ended up at the very end was a twenty percent brighter screen. And you think like, why do we care about the screen being brighter? Is it just so that it fries my eyes more when I have the brightness up all the way at night? No, it's because when you have a screen that's 20% brighter, that means you can use less electricity to power that screen. So Definitely. Um, it's more efficient. You can have a longer lasting battery, a phone or a screen or a computer or a TV that doesn't heat up as much and last longer, all because they just took a very, very close look at all these different layers and made sure that they were optimized. This sounds like such a small change. But when you think about it, unlike the larger scale, like you mentioned, if you're looking at a screen right now, chances are it's OLED, especially like if it's like more high end tech. And with a 20% increase in the brightness, you're going to have, like you said, lower power consumption across millions and millions of users and devices that last longer across millions and millions of users. So you're like decreasing the environmental impact of electronics by, gosh, I don't even know how much. That's, that's incredible. And it, it makes more sense to me then to go buy that OLED TV that's hanging on the wall um, you know, that costs way too much at Best Buy when you're looking at it. It makes oh, more sense to, to buy that. Twice. Yeah. If you know that TV won't consume as much electricity and also that it'll last much longer than the existing ones. So that's you know, something that makes this technology more accessible to people and also wastes a lot less energy.